Let's talk about metatarsal stress fractures. I'm Dr. David, orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, and author of the book, That's Gotta Hurt, The Injuries That Change Sports Forever. I provide education, information, and commentary on all sorts of sports and exercise, injuries, injury treatments, and injury prevention for athletes and active people so that you can stay healthy and perform your best. In a previous video, I talked about fifth metatarsal fractures, and I mentioned there that you can actually have fifth metatarsal stress fractures, and specifically we were talking about the, the long bone on the outside of the foot. But you can actually have a stress fracture at the base of really any of those bones. It's really common at the base of the second and the third, maybe to a lesser extent, the fourth metatarsal. And at least in my practice, my sports medicine practice, I typically see this in runners or running athletes. More commonly women than men, and there's reasons with you know, hormone levels and, and maybe early osteoporosis or osteopenia. But again, you see it in runners that typically increase their training over a short period of time. So maybe they're training for a 10K and they haven't run that much, or they're training for a half marathon or a full marathon, and they really increase their training so that the, the stress on those bones or bone increases too fast without enough time to heal. The symptoms typically go something like this. First, you know, there's usually no traumatic event, but at first, maybe you start having pain 30 minutes into a run, and then you stop running, it goes away in about 10 minutes. Then it starts coming on at 20 minutes, or 15 minutes, or five minutes into a run, and starts taking longer and longer and longer to go away. Then maybe it starts bothering you with your daily activities, walking around the house, walking at work, things like that. That's where it can be a really tricky problem. So you go see a doctor, and I would say it's probably a good idea because you can't do what you want to do. It's starting to hurt more and more with running to the point that you can't do it. You go see a doctor. You know, he or she will do a physical exam, try to figure out what's going on, and be suspicious probably of a stress fracture right just from what you're describing. And if you hurt directly on one of those bones, yes, they're going to suspect a stress fracture. Now, they'll probably get x-rays to see if there's evidence of a stress fracture. But if the pain's been less than, say, six or eight weeks, those x-rays may be negative. Now, you can prove that it's a stress fracture by getting an MRI, although a lot of doctors won't get the MRI and will just go ahead and treat it as if it's a stress fracture because these typically don't need surgery. They just need time to heal. Now, how do you go about doing that? Well, one, you stop running. That's obviously pretty important. You might wear a boot, especially if it's so painful with your normal walking. A boot can be really helpful to take the stress of that away. And then time. You know, this almost always will heal in somewhere between four and six weeks, depending on where it is and other factors like age and a number of other things. But they almost always heal. But the more you try to pound on it and run through it, you risk actually making the pain worse, making it take longer to get better. Yeah, and it, even in theory, causing an outright complete fracture rather than the microscopic little you know, hairline cracks that you get with stress fractures. So it's a difficult injury, especially because it's happening while you're training, but it's something that you can almost always overcome. Okay, I would love to know the number one challenge that you face with your injury, whether or not it's a metatarsal stress fracture or not. I'd love to know because it helps me better understand your injury. So in the description below this video, there's a link that takes you to a page. It's at the very top of the description. It takes you to a page on my website that you can basically answer a few questions, type up all the information about your injury and the challenges that you face. That information that I get from you and anybody else watching helps me better understand what you're going through so I can create courses, you know, articles, videos like these, ebooks, all sorts of material that can better help you understand and overcome your injuries. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I record several of these videos on sports and exercise injuries, injury treatments and injury prevention, and I record monthly Ask Dr. Geyer Live videos, and you'll be notified about all of those directly, but only if you subscribe. So click the subscribe button in the upper right corner of this page. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you right here in our next Injuries and Surgeries video.